Hello everybody and welcome back. I am The Sovereign and this is my court. If this is your first time in attendance, hello. Please consider hitting the subscribe button before you leave our kingdom. Yes, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I know, I know you guys have been like looking for me and searching for me and it's just some, like what? Because I it, I think I, I don't ever think I've taken like any type of break from YouTube, I've always consistently uploaded like every single week, but I was extremely unwell. I didn't have COVID. Honestly, I wish it had been COVID because it would have been easier. Um, so it's been like a month that I've been dealing with this nonsense. And then I just like had to just stop to just regroup, go through some repairs and then come back. I'm not gonna come to YouTube and give you guys anything less than the best that I have. Um, this is my happy place. I like to be happy on YouTube. So when I am severely affected by anything in my life, sometimes it's just best for me to not be on camera because you guys would, honestly, I'm a terrible liar. Like you guys would easily be able to tell that something's extremely wrong with me. And then I know some of you are super a part of my life and would be like, those of you that are involved would be super concerned and I don't wanna concern anybody, but I'm better now and we're good. Also, my apologies to everybody that is in my email inbox because when I was like radio silence, I wasn't even checking my emails and I know that there are some emails that I need to address and I need to respond to. So just everybody that's in my email address right now, you're looking for a response, just know it's because I was unwell and that's why I wasn't returning emails, not because I was ignoring you. I literally was like in my movie fort that I built in the living room for like two weeks straight on the floor, just sleeping there. Like for two weeks, I really did do that. But like I said, we're back to our regular scheduled programming and we're here for a first look at the Miss USA contestant lineup. All 51 contestants have finally been chosen. By the way, because I've been absent for a little bit, um, those of you who are here in the comment section below, let me know anything that I need to catch up on, any contestants that I need to see, um, any countries that are getting ready to have their pageant or have already selected a woman that we wanna talk about. So let me know what I need to be talking about in the comment section. Give me what you wanna hear and I will get with it, okay? But today we're talking about United States. Now, this should be the first um, season that we have a brand new director, Miss Crystal Stewart, which I have a world of faith and hope in. Crystal Stewart is a former Miss USA herself, one of the best of the best. She is feisty, she is fierce, she is glamorous, she knows what she's doing. And so I'm like, I really think we got a shot with Crystal, you know, heading the helm of the ship this year. Shout out, by the way, to all of the IG accounts that are keeping up with pageant news, pageant tea. The Instagram accounts are posting the headshots from the girls that aren't even up on the Miss USA website itself. And I'm like, Miss USA, like, why are these Instagram accounts doing your job better than you, okay? Like I get that we're just now starting to get a new team of people, but you guys gotta be on the ball. You're really letting these Instagram accounts run your world. Like I went to the Miss USA website and it's like, it hasn't been updated. The old contestants are still up there. As the contestants are being chosen, their state headshot should be up there until you do a full um, photo shoot with all the girls, just put up their state headshot. Like, why, why, just why? Come on now, come on. But thank you to all the IG accounts who are doing the job of the Miss USA team <laughs> right now. And I did wanna talk about the headshots because there's a lot to be learned from a headshot. A headshot every pageant girl knows is going to be your physical representation to the judges and to the fan base. A true well-prepared pageant girl knows what a good headshot is. She knows what it's supposed to look like. She knows how she's supposed to do her outfits, her posing, her hair. She knows what the lighting is supposed to be. You can tell who was very meticulous in choosing and setting up their headshot and who kind of just went and took a picture and just threw it up there. Now we have seen that scenario happen last year with the country that shall not be named because I'm not even in the mood to deal with you. We have seen women kind of take cell phone pictures and use it as a headshot. We've seen women, you know, take laptop photos, freaking Zoom pictures and use it as a headshot. And what that's telling me is you do not know what's expected of you. You do not know how serious this competition is. You're not taking it seriously because if you're just taking a cell phone picture, you didn't study. You've never studied a headshot and you damn sure probably haven't ever seen a pageant. You should know what is expected of you. And if you don't, it's because you didn't try, you didn't check, you didn't learn. Not every photographer can take a pageant headshot. It's, it's a, a pageant headshot has a lot of things that have to be correct in order for it to look really good. It is 
it's not an actor's headshot. It's almost like a close up glam photo almost. But even then you can't go full glam on a pageant headshot because then it comes off as too much and it comes off as almost fake or inauthentic, which there are a couple headshots in this case that uh, did look like that. We'll go through that. A good pageant headshot is going to show the most beautiful version of who you are in real life. Your pageant headshot should still look like you, but it should look like the best angle, best position, best version of who you are. A pageant headshot, your hair should be immaculate. It should have a little bit of shine, maybe a backlight. The um, lighting, depending on your skin tone, it should give a real like nice glow to your skin. It shouldn't be too bright to where you're washed out or where the powders on your face are coming off as white and you're getting like a cake face effect. A pageant headshot should have proper angles where your full face is in view, not just like one eye covered by like hair and we're, we're missing half your face because that's more editorial. A headshot should really be your full face as much as possible. Yes, you can do little things here and there to be artistic and creative, but you don't wanna be covering a lot of your face. The background typically is going to be very plain because you don't want it to be distracting. And your outfit is going to emphasize your facial features, your facial structure. It's going to be enough to give you that edge and personality, but not enough to be distracting. There's a lot that goes into a good headshot. And that's why every photographer, regardless of if they're good or not, every photographer cannot take a pageant headshot. Even if they're a great editorial shooting type of person, they're not gonna be used to working with certain types of lighting and eliminating certain shadows and certain angles. It, it's just different. So going back into what I was saying, a true well-prepared pageant contestant knows this. A true well-prepared, well-studied, well-taught pageant contestant knows what is expected of her and knows what a good headshot looks like. So a, a good pageant girl is not gonna send in a lackluster headshot. It won't happen. A good pageant girl is not gonna sit in, send in a poorly edited, poorly lit, off angle headshot. It's not going to happen. So just for like future reference, some people are like, well, why are you judging pictures? I can tell a lot by a photo. I can tell a lot. Sometimes you can get an insight into the woman's confidence and her personality. But honestly, when I see headshots, I'm looking at how well done and chosen this headshot is because then I know that you are educated. You're an educated pageant contestant and you know what's expected of you. If you know what's expected of you when it comes to your headshot, it's very likely you also know what's expected of you when it comes to your walk, your presentation, and your interview. A good headshot tells me that you are ready to compete. That it, it tells me that you are well-educated and you know what it takes to be a pageant queen. If you can't get a headshot right, you're not gonna get anything else right either, okay? So there's, there's a lot to be seen in a headshot. Now, my favorite headshots, um, which I'm pretty sure these are just state headshots and they'll later be updated and put on the website, but my favorite state headshots are Washington, Maryland, Mississippi, Hawaii, District of Columbia, and Michigan. Those are my all time favorite headshots that I have seen. Um, I have District of Columbia right here in my face, so let's talk about her. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Her, her skin has a little bit of glow. Her hair has a bit of body and shine. A very subtle, almost mysterious smile. That hand is bringing an, an emphasis to her face, but it's there very gently. And she's not putting pressure on her skin. If anything, she's kind of like, maybe has a little bit of upward motion on that cheekbone and it really adds definition to that cheekbone. This is a very, very good, well lit, headshot and it can be a little bit tricky for melanated people because if, if if the headshot comes off as too bright, if the lighting is too bright, it's gonna wash out her skin. It's gonna make her skin look dull and you can see her face has that little bit of shine. You can see the melanin, like the, it's, it's, a, it's a damn beautiful photo, be gorgeous. Let's move over a spot to view California because California's photo is right next to DC. California is a beautiful girl. California always sends a gorgeous like model type-esque and California, you need to stop to be honest. Um, not to say anything bad about this contestant because I really don't know too much about her, but it seems like my state in particular is really focused on sending a model-esque type beauty and they're willing to overlook the more important aspects of a pageant contestant. You can send girl gorgeous girls all you want, but if she can't interview, if she doesn't have charisma, if she can't walk, like good luck. Um, the last time I remember having like a viable Californian competitor was Nadia Mejia. 
That's the last time I was like, oh my God, California like might be able to take this because recently Californians really haven't been giving me the it factor, the feistiness that demands, you know, that she be crowned a queen. I haven't been getting that, but I don't know much about this competitor in particular. Hopefully she is able and willing to bring the fire that we need to be a finalist and possibly a future Miss USA, especially under Miss Crystal Stewart, ma'am, yes. This photo, she's a beautiful girl. She's one of the most stunning women in competition. I can definitely give her that. But this photo I can tell is overly edited. There's two photos for sure I know are way too edited. California is not as bad as the other one, but I can tell. And I should never be able to tell that the photo has been retouched. Obviously every headshot is going to have a bit of retouching and I have no problem with it. They're, just so you know, Sometimes retouching actually is very much necessary. If I take a picture with my phone right now, it's not always going to look how I look in real life. Like I could take a photo of myself right now and sometimes it really doesn't look like me. So sometimes you need a bit of retouching to put the angles and the shapes back into where they're supposed to be. So retouching a lot of the times truly is necessary if you just have something acting wonky or weird and it really doesn't look like the contestant. But, uh, um, and every photo really does go through a bit of retouching. But I have a problem when especially major competition competitors, photos look like they're going to a full glitz, like child pageant. Because if you've ever seen like toddlers and tiaras, how those, um, those headshots look like plastic toys and it's just edited and Photoshopped to hell, that is not good. You still want your headshot to come off as authentic. And in this photo, California kind of looks like a plastic Barbie doll. Yes, she's gorgeous, but I don't want to see the retouching. I don't want to see the editing. And it's kind of looking like to me, um, the hot spots on her forehead and her left cheek is a bit too bright. Now, the brightness could have been taken down just a little bit on there. And then I, there's no life coming through that expression. Yes, she's gorgeous in the photo, but you gotta be more than gorgeous. I gotta, I'm telling people all the time, you have to be more than gorgeous. Look at DC that's right next to this picture. There's something behind her eyes. That expression is giving me something. Meanwhile, California's expression really isn't. Now, yes, granted, these are state um, headshots, but still, like you guys are major competitors now and you know we're gonna talk about you, okay? Alaska's another one. Um, so what's going on here? Something's up with Alaska. Because there are times where I know a woman is beautiful and the photo's not doing her justice. Alaska's photo is not doing her justice. I love the fact that she has a very, very bright smile, but I, I don't know if it's the makeup or the angle, something's going, I haven't dissected these completely, I'm just doing this on the fly. Um, but it's not doing her justice at all. And I think part of the reason, number one, is the makeup, but the other thing is the background is almost the same tone as her complexion. It's almost the same color, you seeing that? Um, so that's gonna be one thing that's probably like washing out her skin and her hair could have, it could have just been a bit more. It could have been a little bit more glam. She could have used a bit of air under her hair, a little bit of body, some accessories. She doesn't have an earring. She doesn't have a necklace. She doesn't have a pop of anything other than that fabulous smile, which is great, but she needed a bit more pop. Alabama is right next to Alaska. Look, I wasn't gonna go through all the girls and I'm still not gonna go through all the girls, but I'm doing this on the fly, right? Okay. Alabama right next to Alaska, her smile enchanting. Alabama girl, that smile, if you would make top 10. With with this headshot, you would make top 10 in my headshot photos, okay? Cause I, I think I put down like what? Six, yeah, I'd put you in my top 10 for that smile. Cause that smile is beautiful. She's so damn happy. Um, the brightness on her face, because I do believe Alabama's a bit of a melanated queen. The, the lighting on her face is a bit too bright. It's a, it's a little bit too much brightness going on. This is what I was warning when I was talking about like DC. DC has a little bit of glow on her forehead and cheek, but it's not overly bright. Alabama's photo seems like it's a little bit too much brightness on her face to the point where it's making her face white. And you can tell that's not her complexion. Hawaii is one of the girls on my, what, top six favorite headshots. And hers is, I love a unique headshot. Um, a lot of girls are very used to giving a very pageant patty, um, like USA typical type of headshot. If I put up a picture of like all the headshots throughout the history of the Miss USA competition, they're all very similar. And you really wouldn't be able to tell if a picture came from 2010 or if it came from 2018 or if it came from like today. They're very typical pageant patty. Um, Hawaii though, she's giving 
uniqueness. It's a little bit different. It's still a good headshot to where I can see her face, but it's almost editorial-esque. It's giving a little bit of personality, a little bit of mysteriousness. Her hair is in her face, but not so much to where it's blocking her features or I'm not really getting anything from her face. Bone structure is amazing. I love a unique photo that just makes a girl stand out. Make sure my phone's not dying here. Hawaii's photo is it, it, fantastic. It's fantastic. The intensity that she has with her eyes, she's got like the shadows around her eyes and then she's got it outlined with like black eyeliner. It's very intense around the eyes. Love it. Marilyn's giving me baby doll. She's giving me baby doll. She's got like those doe eyes and it's perfectly like emphasized with that low hanging bang, but she looks fantastic with bangs, like facial structure, very unique. She's got her hand underneath her hair. It's, it's, just, it's just so much like, a hand can really do a lot for a photo. It really can do a, a whole lot for a photo. And who else did it? It was Maryland and who was my other one? What is it, Mississippi? DC. Maryland and DC both use those hands to expert precision. It just adds that extra little bit of oomph. Her eyes directly into the camera, they're just like big and doe and deer-like. Love it. I just, very good girl. I do wanna talk about Maine. I wanna talk about Maine because there's, I think it's a lighting issue with Maine. And it looks like we're getting a lighting issue with Louisiana too, but I think maybe Louisiana's having more makeup issues there. Um, Maine's photo, it's it looks like her face is darker. Like the person is not lit as well as the backdrop is. Um, or maybe the tan's too dark, but there should be more dimension on her face. It almost looks like her entire body is one flat color and you're not getting the highlights and the shadows that should be present. And it's making the whole picture look really, really weird. And I'm saying this because she's a pretty girl. So then, so I'm like, I'm, I'm more so picking on the flaws in the headshot than the girls themselves. Cause the girls themselves are beautiful. It's more like lighting and makeup issues. Uh, for example, Louisiana seems like it wasn't a lighting issue, it's a more makeup issue. I think it's the bronzer on the forehead that's making her forehead look like it's got a shadow. And then the, below the eyes is nicely highlighted. So I think it's a makeup issue right here in the forehead. Let me zoom in on that too. Because she, yeah, she's really, really pretty. So that's that's a makeup issue. And then her um, her contour and blush is much too dark. Like I, you, you can clearly see it in the photo. When you do a headshot, I don't wanna see your makeup. Nobody should see your makeup. We shouldn't be drawn to your makeup. We shouldn't be paying attention to your makeup. Shouldn't even be able to see your makeup. Look at Michigan right below Louisiana. Tell me where her contour and her highlight stop. You can't see it. Same thing with Mississippi um, in this little thing. I can see a little bit of her contour, but it's not distracting the way Louisiana's is distracting. And her cheek is turned like directly into the camera. So it, it really just draws your eyes to it. But when it comes to your headshot, everybody's eyes should be drawn to you as a person, not your outfit, not your hair, not your makeup. None of that should be distracting. Um, Michigan's my number one. She's my favorite headshot. She's my favorite headshot. I mean, she, that's my, and I think it's her expression. An expression can do so much for you in a headshot. Michigan has like this sly smile as if she's like, but I'm gonna win though. Like she's got that, you know, I'm gonna win like face. I love her expression and I, I'm pretty sure that's why she's my number one. That expression is to die for. It's, it's happy. It's mysterious, it's a little bit sly and sneaky, but it's still confident. I am not distracted by her hair, her makeup. The lighting is exquisite. Whoever took this photo, girl, give them props, send them, send them a text message and just, just, just say thank you one more time. Tell them thank you one more time for this beautiful photo. She's got a slight pop of color with the earring and the outfit looking over one shoulder. The dimension, she's got a slight shadow on her face and um, shadow underneath the cheek, but it's highlight, it's like lit up on one side of the face. It's, it's perfect. Everything's perfect. Makeup, hair, outfit, perfect. It's perfect. I have no complaints about that headshot. That's why it's my number one. Now, Missouri is right below Michigan and she seems like she's having a bit of a hot spot right on her eye. I have no problem with the position and her hair is like perfectly windblown. And she also did the pop of color. But do you see the difference between Missouri and Michigan, which they're right next to each other. One's on top, one's on bottom. Missouri's face is brighter than the rest of her body. It's a little bit too bright. Do you see how Michigan, she has a couple of like glowy spots on her face, but it looks natural as if her skin is just like slightly dewy to where Missouri looks like her face is just too bright. She just had too much of a spotlight on her face. I Yes, I'm being nitpicky, but you guys know this. These girls are major competitors. This is Miss USA and they're trying to get into Miss Universe. We're being nitpicky. Yes, we are. And hopefully, you know, other people can learn 
from this because I don't think um, a lot of people do in-depth discussions on like headshots, right? So we're gonna talk about it. Mississippi, she's also one of my favorites. Um, hers is very unique and I love a unique photo, you know, set yourself apart. She's got like wet hair, it's a little bit fierce. She didn't put on like a lot of makeup, right? It's not like super intense to where she's got, you can tell she's got like a winged eyeliner and super smoky eyes and then she's got a red lip. Like she's not doing too much, it's just enough. She's got the perfect amount of accessories, but it's not really distracting me from her. It's giving me sultry. It's giving me sultry and I'm not mad at it. I like it. I like the expression. I, it looks, it seems very lax and easy for her. No problems here. I just stopped and looked at Montana and I'm like, real, I'm getting into Montana. So let me just, let me just, let me just blow this up real quick. Montana has these gorgeous eyes, gorgeous eyes. And I think it's a little bit rude. It makes, Montana's picture almost looks like a serial killer, okay? And it's no shade to you, girl, because you're gorgeous. But those blue eyes are very intense. But what else is intense is the makeup on those eyes, the eyebrows, and the hair. It's too much intensity to where it seems like she's going to eat my soul. It's too intense. Um, if you're going to do an eye directly at the camera with that intense blue, the hair should have been softened a little bit. It was just, I think it was the fan in her face was just blowing too hard to where it seems like the hair is just kind of like standing up off her scalp as if she's just like, I'm going to eat you. Like she's a ghost or something. Cause her eyes are beautiful. But then um, I think the, what is it? The shadow, the eye shadow is a little bit too low on her eyes. So it's almost giving her raccoon effect. It's just too much intensity. That's what it is. And because those eyes are so striking and she's got ve very angular eyebrows and she's got even, even a very angular Cupid's bow, everything didn't need to be intense because she naturally has intense features. So it's just too much intensity going on there. Like look at the photo, tell me she doesn't look like she wants to eat your spirit. Yes, yeah, she does. New Mexico. New Mexico is another one that I would put on my favorite like top tens of headshots. I definitely, if I had like my Full top 10, New Mexico would be on there. Um, baby doll face, she's just, she's, she's just pretty. She girl, babe, you're just cute. Oh my God. New Mexico's adorable. She's got these like little pouty lips and she's got these intense eyes. I think it, look, I'm being nitpicky because I know how photos are edited and stuff. And maybe it's my personal style when it comes to this because her, her headshot truly is really, really gorgeous. I think that the highlight on her face, the brightness, just slightly too bright, just slightly, ever so slightly. Because do you see how dark her cheek is? It's just the contrast between the brightness on her face and, the, and that cheek. It's just a bit too much for my personal taste. But overall, like she's freaking adorable. And she definitely would make like my top 10 favorite headshots, no doubt. Nevada, okay, we need to talk about Nevada. Nevada's the other photo where I think it's too edited. It is too photoshopped and I shouldn't be able to tell. I went to Nevada's, I've been, look, I've been going to some of these girls' Instagrams already because I knew um, about Nevada when everybody was going nuts about her. So I checked her out. She's one of the first I checked out. I went back to Nevada's Instagram though. Nevada is incredibly, incredibly beautiful. Like she's very, very beautiful. So honestly, the editing, doesn't do any, it, if anything, it makes the photo worse because that woman is naturally very gorgeous. Honestly, this photo does not do her justice. And I can tell that it's a bit overly edited. It's a bit overly uh, photoshopped and airbrushed. The, um, like the hairline and everything, I can, I can just tell. I can tell on top of the fact that I can see bits of the makeup and I don't wanna see your makeup. I wanna see your face. Do you see North Dakota? Do you see her face? Look at North Dakota's face. You don't see her makeup, you see her face. Nevada, I feel like I can see where her bronzer and her powders are. I don't want to see your makeup. I wanna see your beautiful face on top of the fact that I can see where it's been edited. And for a woman that th is this beautiful, it's so unnecessary. Like honestly, Nevada, you don't even need, I, I, I don't think the girls did this, by the way. I do not blame the girls for a lot of these little nitpicky scenarios, uh, problems here and there. Most of the time they are not in control of their makeup, their hair, the lighting, the stage, whatever. They're possibly in control of only their outfits, but typically the girls will hire makeup artists and photographers and everything, and they don't really have a say in how things come out. However, ladies, be careful about which photos you're choosing and letting your editors or photographers know how the photo should be edited and if it's overly edited, because I have personally been in a situation where I took a photo with someone and when I got the final result, my face was edited to hell. 
And it was so obvious. It was so obvious that they edited my face beyond the point of what was necessary. Understanding you're gonna edit some shadows and contrast and lighting and the warmth and tones and everything. But when I'm saying editing, I'm talking full on Photoshop and even still, I understand that I naturally have like plump lips. So you want that to come through in the camera and you may Photoshop them so that they look as plump on the photo as they do in real life. I understand that. Um, but I'm talking like they Photoshopped my nose to be slimmer than it was. Like it, it was so obvious. So I understand it's not always the girl's faults, but you still wanna be mindful of what's being done to your photo because it is your photo and it's what's gonna represent you in a major competition. Be careful of that. The editing on Nevada, totally unnecessary. Girl, you could you could take a photo in a bathroom mirror and look flawless. Like Nevada's very pretty, unnecessary. North Dakota's face is is gorgeous. You're 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 gorgeous. Would that make my top ten? Probably. Yeah, it would. North Dakota's photo is amazing. Texas, Texas, another woman, another state that can be relied upon to send me a wonderfully trained, prepared pageant girl. I expect nothing but the best from Texas. Texas, cause you give it to me. Texas gives it every year. Texas does not send anything but a polished queen. And this is exactly what I would expect from Texas. Now I would say it's a little bit expected. Like this is, is exactly what I would expect of a pageant girl. The photo's almost very pageant Patty-esque. I would like to see a little bit more originality coming from Texas because they do give me a very well-trained pageant girl every year, but they're almost very pageant Patty. And understanding it's a very pageanty state, you still wanna be original. You still wanna be unique, but I'm not gonna, I'm not docking Texas because they're reliable. And reliability in a Miss USA competition I will take that any day, thank you. I'm looking at South Dakota's photo and that photo, if it wasn't for the lighting, I think would be phenomenal. I think that the lighting kind of washed out her features. You see how bright that photo is? She's gorgeous in the photo, but I just think the lighting is just too bright and it's messing up her features because I'm like, if you zoom into the photo and really look at her face, that should be one of the favorite photos, but because it's so darn bright and it's really washing her out, it's not looking the way it should look. We're not getting the dimensions out of her face that we should get, because that smile is to die for. I love a girl with a glorious smile. It's just, it's too washed out. It's it's too bright. Okay, let's talk about this one. This will be the last one I talk about, probably. Um, Washington. Washington, she's very glammed up. She's, she's giving me full glam, which is fine, because it's not like too much, too much, right? It's not like she went like overly smoky on the eye with like a colored, colored lip. She did glam right. I'm gonna zoom in here. Eyebrows are perfect. Makeup is to die for. She's got the angles, good lighting. You see how you can tell she's got full glam makeup on, but you can't really see the um, dimensions of the placement of the makeup, you're not really seeing the highlight and the contour and the bronzer and the blush, you know, like you're not seeing all of that completely standing out on her face. It's really blended in nicely and your attention is drawn directly to her eyes, not her makeup, or it's her eyes. And that's what you want in a headshot. You want people to just be drawn to your spirit, your soul. It's a good photo, Washington. You did a good job, girl. So these are my thoughts on some of the headshots, some of my favorite headshots. I know that we are going to be expecting some photo shoots while the girls are in Cancun, because that's where they are. If you didn't know, all the Miss USA contestants are going to be in Mexico, hopefully getting it together for a beautiful stage presentation. I look forward to seeing what Crystal Stewart can bring out of all of you. And finally, putting the United States back on the map when it comes to super threats for Miss Universe. Somebody's gotta give it to me, okay? I know a lot of people are banking on Nevada. I know that, so we'll see what happens. But based on these photos, it's seeming like we have a lot of contenders. I am going to try to hunt down some of the girls um, walking photo walking photos, photos. I am going to try to hunt down some of the girls walking videos to see um, if they're giving us anything. Miss USA competitors, girls, if you want the hype, the exposure, people talking about you, like give us something to talk about. If I was a Miss USA competitor, I would be putting stuff out on Instagram, showing off my walk, showing off everything. Like get the attention, ladies, you have a crown. You want the attention, right? So I, I'm going to go to their Instagrams and see what I can find on their presentations, you know, see what's going on. I've seen a couple, I've seen a couple and I'm not gonna say who, but I've seen a couple and they're still giving me very Miss USA pageant Patty-esque. You guys are not giving me Miss Universe. I've only seen like five of you, but besides Nevada, the other five that I've seen, you were not giving me Miss Universe. And I'm telling you that ahead of time because Crystal Stewart, I believe is fully going to expect a Miss Universe competitor out of you. Get it together.
good luck, ladies. You, you know I'm messing with you, okay? Love you, ladies. In the comments section below, let me know what you think of the Miss USA competitors. They are getting ready to take the stage. Who's your favorite? Who do you think is the number one competitor vying for the crown? Let me know your thoughts. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. And like I said, if this is your first time in attendance, hello, please consider hitting the subscribe button before you peace out of the kingdom. I love you, I'll miss you, and you know I will be back in a future video. Bye.